If there is only one thing I want you to remember this afternoon, it's this next sentence. Connection creates balance. Connection. It might be the connection that you make with yourself when you meditate, you pray, you allow yourself to experience silence, you commune with nature. It might be the connection that you make with your family, your friends, your colleagues, your coworkers, your vendors, your, the strangers that you meet every day. Or it might be the connection you feel when you offer your humanness to your God. But real balance originates in connection. Now, I'm not against all the ways that the experts have told us to balance our lives. The strategies are invaluable. But the fact of the matter is, you wouldn't be in this room if you weren't already really good at them. I mean, look at you. You're upright. You're facing the correct direction. You found the room. You're here on time. You know how to do this. The problem that I have with some of the strategies, take time management, for example. As a philosophy of life, is that for every hour that I allegedly save, I have 10 hours of demands competing for it. The bottom line is this. Unless we learn to connect, no amount of managing, organizing, delegating, prioritizing, or simplifying is going to make you feel good. And feeling good is what life balance is all about. Every single business measurement is improved when you take people who aren't thriving and compare them to people who are thriving. It makes perfect business sense. And that's why the new life balance motto has to be, when you can't keep up, connect. Work-life balance used to be a woman's issue, but a new report from LinkedIn found that it is now the number one concern for people of both genders. While everybody loves a great bargain, the truth is the best things in life really are free. And Mary Loverty, author of Stop Screaming at the Microwave, has some wonderful ideas on how to connect with your spirit or connect with that which brings you joy. That's what we mean by spirit. And at the same time, bring some to those you love. This is a great idea. Free, 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 free. So what I did was I came up with a concept called a memory jar. I got a cut glass jar with a lid. You could use anything, an oatmeal box. And then on little pieces of paper, I wrote down a memory. I remember the talk we had the night before I got married. I remember calling you from the hospital and telling you that your first grandchild had been born. I remember when I was 12 and I used to iron pillowcases for 10 cents a piece so that I could save money to buy go-go boots. <laughs> now, everyone under 40 is saying, what are go-go boots? <laughs> everyone on, under 30 is saying, what is ironing? Mary Laverty was the featured expert on both ABC World News Tonight and a 2020 news special about stress and the American woman. She has appeared five times on The Oprah Winfrey Show. Back in a moment. That was terrific. Thank you. Mary is the author of four books. She's been inducted into the National Speakers Hall of Fame. Speaker Magazine named Mary one of the top 25 most influential speakers shaping the industry. Her life balance strategies have reached millions of people through the Wall Street Journal to the New England Journal of Medicine to the Ladies Home Journal. Her diverse client list includes Apple, LinkedIn, FedEx, NASA, the Mayo Clinic, the California Governor's Women's Conference, and the American Trucking Association. In addition to connection, I recently discovered another important part of the life balance equation. How do we move from the status quo to the new normal? Since things change constantly, we need to know how to take our next step. You know, we get married, divorced, have babies, get empty nested, lose jobs, get promoted. How do we stay grounded amid so much ambiguity? Well, I had an opportunity to answer that question. And I came home to my dream house in Denver, Colorado. I walked in the door. I saw how beautiful it was. I had just refinanced. I had decorated it within an inch of its life. It was perfect and I was never leaving. And again, whatever that source or voice is said to me, all of the reasons that you needed and wanted this house are complete. Go. The voice did not say go where. So I put my house on the market. It sold in 60 days in 2010. 
And I gave away all of my belongings to my family and friends. And for the last two and a half years, I have lived around the world without a house, not much of a plan. And it has turned into two and a half years of juicy, exciting adventure and fun and service and lots of lessons. So I do feel like it is my mission to help you understand the steps that you can take to make your next step. Most of us stay in toxic situations because we badly need the health insurance. And as a result, we badly need the health insurance. How do you quit? Consciously, with as much grace and style as you can in line with your values. And why do we quit? Because it is so much easier to get what you want if you're willing to quit the things that are in the way. Knowing what to quit, when to quit, how to quit, and why you are quitting is the hallmark of an authentic life. Despite what you've been told, winners do quit. The concept of life balance has evolved over the last two decades. From trying to get it all done, to realizing balance is more about creating a life that feels good. The power of the ritual was brought home to me when I was just a little girl. I grew up in a town of a thousand people in Iowa, and we used to go out to the farmhouse and visit my grandparents. And I'd get to the front door of the farmhouse and I would fling open the door and then I would run just as fast as my little legs could carry me through the living room, through the dining room, through the parlor, into the uh, pantry, way back into what we called the old summer kitchen. And I would wait there excitedly because I knew what was coming. And here would come Grandpa Schulte and he'd be dressed in these striped farmer bib overalls and he would slowly and silently walk through the living room, through the dining room, through the kitchen, into the pantry where I was waiting impatiently. And he would go up high on a shelf and he'd come down to my level with a magic box of Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> and I could grab as many Tootsie Rolls as my two little fists could hold. Now this was very symbolic because I grew up in a big family. I have five brothers. And for those of you who also grew up in big families, you know what I'm talking about. In a big family, there isn't anything that's without limits, except Tootsie Rolls at Grandpa's house. So it was a very symbolic gesture for me. Well, when I grew up, got married, became pregnant with my first child, I wanted to tell my father, his son, that he was going to become a grandpa. So instead of telling him, I just sent him a box of Tootsie Rolls. And reportedly, this quiet, reserved, kind-hearted man sat down and cried. Now, he wasn't crying because I was going to have a baby. He was remembering the relationship he'd had with his own beloved grandfather. He remembered his father. And he understood Grandpa had been gone a long time, and that he had now assumed the revered role of Grandpa Schulte. He was remembering that little girl who used to grab Tootsie Rolls by the fistful. And now she's a grown woman having a baby of her own. Those emotions span five generations. That is the power of the ritual. Mary is a former faculty member of the University of Colorado School of Medicine and was the director of the Hypertension Research Center for 15 years. She offers high-energy, interactive programs with innovative, <laughs> practical ideas so to you keep your life in balance no and I'm to take now. your next step. Yeah, and it feels dicey. So I'm in a San Francisco hotel when I get the call. My daughter, who was 14 years old at the time, had um, gone to the movies that Saturday afternoon with her girlfriends. A young man named Adam, also 14 years old, had his mother drive him over to our house in Denver. Adam had made a big sign and he hung it on our garage and it said, homecoming question mark Adam. Then he took little chocolate kisses and he lined the driveway with chocolate kisses all the way to the sidewalk, all the way to the front porch. On the front porch, he laid a red rose. On the red rose, he laid a note and it said, dear Emily, now that I have kissed the ground you walk on, Look at that guy, he's writing it down. I love that. Yeah, you can use it. 
now that I have kissed the ground you walk on, will you go to the homecoming dance with me? And back then, in pure dating protocol, he wrote, P.S., if the answer is yes, page me. <laughs> well, I'm in San Francisco, and I hang up the phone, and my heart sinks. I should have been there. I felt very hypocritical, going around the world telling everyone to stay connected to what's important, and I'm out of town on the weekends working. Then I remembered, one of the definitions of to connect is to plug into an electrical current. And in this case, everybody was turned on. Emily had called every 14-year-old within a 100-mile radius. Adam, come on, the kid's on cloud nine, she said yes. Her dad is being totally obnoxious with a video camera. And her, his mom told me later that she was sitting in the car watching him perform this little rite of passage. She told me, it wasn't that long ago, I couldn't get Adam to take a shower. <laughs> and now he's Romeo asking Juliet for a date. And I'll be honest with you, I was having a few magical moments of my own, feeling very connected to my audience doing what I know I'm on the planet to do. When I looked at it from a connection point of view, I couldn't really find a problem. Well, the next week I'm home, and we are at, Emily and I are at the mall, and we are looking for the perfect dress, the matching shoes, and the bra that doesn't show. Remember those days? And I am telling her how excited I am that she was asked to this dance in such a clever and such a romantic way. She stops in the middle of the mall, stops her foot, and says, you're going to use this story in your talks, aren't you? I said, oh, Emily, I already have. <laughs> but doesn't that turn us on? When there is someone in our lives, whether it's our partner or spouse or best friend or cousin or child, there's somebody in our lives that knows us so well. They know what we're going to say or think or do or feel. And isn't that the little kernel that takes us on our journey and allows us to connect and take our next step? I have three goals for my program. I want people to start thinking about life balance in an entirely new way. I want them to walk out of there with at least one and maybe several specific things they're actually going to do. And third, and maybe most importantly, I want them to say to themselves, you know, maybe this lady's right. Given this new definition of life balance, I'm not doing such a bad job. Okay, so I don't get it all done. But I've created tremendous connections in my life, personally, professionally, in my community, spiritually. Maybe it's time to give myself credit for all the good I do. And I would say, indeed, it is time to give ourselves credit for all the good that we do.